leaves, his views on God and science, magic fever, David Sandler's and the Invisible Salesman, those were all his topics. Today, Bob will take you on an unforgettable adventure with a lesson to learn. In order to do this, Bob must incorporate the requirements of the eighth speech guide, or the, the objectives in the eighth speech. So sit back and learn from Bob's experience. The title of the speech is When in a Foreign Country. Asking the right question is essential for peace of mind. Bob Glickman. Have you ever had a misunderstanding that led to dire consequences? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I did, and it almost turned an adventure into a misadventure simply because I did not ask the right questions when I was in a foreign country. Let me take you back to this suspenseful misadventure. It all started in Greece 40 plus years ago. My friend and I were on a 30-day barnstorming tour of Europe and we allotted four days to see Greece. We started out in Athens. On our last day, we were leaving Athens in the morning to take the ferry over to Brandisi in Italy. Now, this is not a simple chore. In fact, let me explain. Athens is on the far east side of Greece. The port that goes to Italy is called Patros, right here. And that's on the west side. This is further complicated by the fact that there were no I-75s or I-4s at mm -hmm. this time traversing <laughs> the country. Mm -hmm. Further, there are lots of Greek islands, the biggest of which is the southern part of Greece. And in order to get to Patras, the port, you had to take a ferry in order to get to the ferry. So with these circumstances, to appreciate and simplify our trip, I'm going to share with you our grand plan. First, we left Athens to take a scenic bus ride, and I mean fabulous scenery, going up mountains, hills, hairpin turns, seeing olive groves, steep cliffs, and arriving at the town of Delphi, about 3,000 feet above sea level. And the trip was an adventure starting with the bus. See, when you get on the bus, you find out very quickly that a third of the passengers are chickens, hens, and yes, <laughs> even one goat. And folks, you haven't lived until you've communicated with a couple of chickens and their owner. Shortly after that was followed by Greek music over the loudspeakers <laughs> and all the passengers singing Greek songs, and even dancing to Miserlou or Zorba the Greek <laughs> right on the bus. In addition, to make this trip even more unforgettable and scary was the Greek approach and solution to going around hairpin turns. Mm. I call it suicide. <laughs> You see, Greeks does not have a solution or a method for getting around here in currents. The driver never slows down, never uses his brake. Instead, he honks his horn so that he thinks he's going to magically go through the oncoming bus and continue on. Well, I'm not really a religious uh, guy, but after saying <laughs> Psalms 23 and Psalms 24 repeatedly, I thank God that we finally arrived in Delphi. I needed a break. So we thought we would get off the bus and just go and visit the artifacts of the Oracle from Delphi's home, which was just a few minutes away. But before we did that, we thought we would go to the ticket master and ask, is there another bus leaving for the port? You see, from Delphi, we had to take these hairpin turns all the way down to the port of called Aitia. 
and from my tier is a three-hour ferry over to Platonus, sort of like platonic. Once we were on this island, we had a two-hour bus ride all the way up to Patros, and there goes our trip to Italy. So, we went for 30 minutes to visit the oracle, he's feeling very good, we came back to the bus, and then we asked the question that perhaps we should have asked earlier. We asked, what time does the bus leave for going down to the port of Atia? And he said, yes, no problem. <laughs> well, I found out, to my horror, that the only two words he knew in the English language was, yes, no problem. Oh, no. <laughs> so, a bit of panic came in. You ever feel this wave of nausea or just a feeling in the pit of your stomach that kind of rises up? Well, we were on the verge of panic and started flagging down any car that passed, even a, even a wheelbarrow. It didn't matter. We just wanted to get to the point. So that wasn't working out. Full panic sweeps in. So I remember from Marketing 101, that all I need to do is uh, zip out my carton of marble rolls and furiously rave it at any car that's passing oh. by. And it worked. We were stopped by an English couple driving a small Volkswagen, and they stashed my friend and I in the back with their two children. I guess you really like those marble rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and then we told them we have 20 minutes to get to the port. So he said, no problem. He flew on the accelerator, in total disregard for his family, went down these hair pin curves, and this exceeded my religious experience on the bus. <laughs> when we got dockside, we finally reached the port only to find the boat to Atia had just left. Uh -oh. So in our despair, we went to the ticket master and we said, when is the next ferry leaving? He spoke English. He says, not so bad. It's going to leave in just two hours. But that would be too late for us to get to Patros, where we needed to take off. We needed to leave at eight, and that would take us nine to get in. So he said something that was a miracle. He said, are you Americans? Well, today, you don't know whether to answer yes or no. But this is 40 years ago. He said, of course I'm American. He says, thank God you fought along beside me. Uh, against the communists for the freedom of my country. And of course I'm saying, oh yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so he turned around and he embraced me and he said, we love you. And my brother George happens to own the line that goes from uh, Patros to Brandisi in Italy. Oh. I'll call him and have him hold up the train for you. Oh. Uh, or the plane, or, or the uh, boat. <laughs> and, and thus came the miracle. So we said thanks and the lesson learned I pass on to you is please make sure you ask the right questions when in a foreign company and yes it is okay to be an american and to be proud <laughs>